Okay, today I'd like to go over uh, the Excel Lambda function. And I'm going to, using that, I'm going to write a new function called net future value. You may be familiar with a function called net present value. <clears throat> if you uh, study finance and you, you study capital budgeting. Um, so I thought, I've always thought it would be interesting to write a function called net future value. And uh, now that the Lambda function is more widely available, in fact, it just appeared on this computer I'm using right now, yesterday. Um, I, I thought it might be a good time to work work with the Lambda function, especially since it's such a powerful function. Almost all Excel users are going to start running across this on spreadsheets that they get. Uh, right now, it's only available to Microsoft 3, Office 365 users. I did an informal poll yesterday with my students. I actually had a, like a... Uh, virtual meeting with a virtual class last night and about half my students had it. I had them all open up Excel. The way you can see if you have it, you can go equals lambda and then right after you hit the parentheses it should say parameter or calculation. If it doesn't say that, that means you probably don't have it yet. Okay? So, um, anyway, one thing you might want to do is update your, I guess I spelled account wrong, update your account. You would go in here in a file account and then update it right here press on this button to update it um, also you might want to restart your computer now I actually have Windows 11 and it worked I had it with my Windows 11 so that that didn't cause a problem so anyway now that we talked about lambda enough lambda basically I talked about the availability of it basically what it does it allows you to write your own function like I told you I'm gonna write a net present value function without using visual basic so I'm gonna move that aside for now um, so, so let's just go ahead. I'm going to solve a problem the old way. And then I'm going to write a function using lambda. And I'm going to call it net future value. Because I want to find the future value at the end of period 5. So if we could do it the long way. We could... Uh, now, the, the, by the way, I'm, I'm, let me explain the problem. We're borrowing $10,000. And that's going to give us these cash flows in the future. And we want to know what, what the value of all that would be. Well, how much money would we have at the end of period five? Now, we could actually take it all up to the present value using that present value. But what, is that, what about taking it to the future? So um, so that's what we're doing here. And uh, so what we could do, whoops, let me do it, the, do it the long way first. And I'll show you a shortcut method. And then I'll show you how to do it using, uh, whoops, using, uh, using the lambda function will create our own function so i'm going to say the future value of these cash flows and uh so this is going to be equal to the future value of uh, the rate by the way i'm assuming it's kind of a simplistic assumption but we're somewhere the interest rate's the same whether we're borrowing or investing and i'm going to go ahead and f4 this to make this an absolute reference and type these dollar signs in front and uh, because when I copy it down, I don't want it to move off of that. And then uh, the number of periods is going to be this F4 minus this, right? So it's going to be um, so it's going to be five minus zero. So it's going to be five periods. So here it's going to be five minus one and be four. So again, I want that always to stick on that five. This isn't considered a payment, so I'll skip it. And I want now the way present value works. If you remember. Uh, or the way future value works, if you remember, and present value. A lot of the Excel functions work this way. It pays attention to the cash flow. So if I put a negative here, I'm going to get a positive in the, in the other, on the other side, right? If I invest a negative, I'm going to get money back. Well, I want the answer to be the same sign as up here. So I'm going to start out with it. I'm going to make, I'm going to flip the sign on this. And then, uh, so $10,000, if I owe $10,000 in period one and don't pay anything back on it, at the end of period five, I would owe twelve thousand two hundred seven hundred sixty-two eighty-two. Okay, so then we can just scroll this down. If I if I did all those references, so they're absolute, it'll automatically it'll automatically uh, point to the right things for each one of these. And one way you could check 
that last cash flow should be two thousand dollars because I, I I deposited the two thousand dollars and immediately I want to know how much it's worth, right? So it didn't grow, didn't didn't have any interest rate growth on it. So finally, we can calculate the future value at that time, and it's going to be equal to the sum. So I'll just go ahead and use auto sum to sum of all those. So um, that's the answer. So I would have lost. I'd have a negative 771. Now, if the cash of capital might have been a little bit cheaper, maybe it was 4%, or maybe it was 3%. There might be some percent, 2%. There, I would have had, made, I would have been okay because, uh, so it all, it really very, it depends on the cost of capital, how you're going to be, you know, the rate you're borrowing and investing, how, how you're going to be doing. So, so that's one way to do it. Now, we could also do the two step solution. So no, there's a lot of ways to do this. I'm just going to show you two. Um, you could calculate the net present value first. So I could say it equals the net present value of uh, five, the rate is 5%. And it asks you starting at the first period what the cash flows are. So it's going to be there. And then I have to add back uh, my cash flow at time zero. Now that one doesn't, as you can see, that one doesn't flip. They, they present value and and future value doesn't flip sign, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, so I get the net present value, and then I have to take that out to the future value because I took that all back to time zero now. So now what I'm going to do, I have to do the second step. I have to go equals future value, and then we're going we're going to use this rate. And then uh, the number of periods is five. We're taking that. We're, we we took it back to here. Now I'm going to take it five periods out. And then there's no payment. And if not this, we do have to flip the sign. So it's going to be a negative this. And then uh, uh, there. And you get the same answer as you had up here, right? So uh, so that's a two-step way to do it. Now, so now, so I, so I, I think it would be interesting to do the lambda function. So first we have to write the function, and then and then we can uh, uh, and then we can use the lambda function solution. So I'll write the function over here. So we have to create a lambda function because we don't have it. So I'm going to call. I'm, I'm going to say equals lambda. And like I say, since lambda is working on this computer, I can use this. So I have to put some parameters in. So what inputs do I want? So first thing we want is rate. So I'll just call that R. So we have to name our parameters. And then uh, the next thing we want, when we calculate this net present value, we have R, and then we have the, the cash flows. So I'll, call, I'll maybe say CFS for cash flows. Remember, when we highlighted one through five, we're going to need that. And then uh, we need cash flow zero, so I'm going to maybe call cash flow zero. And then finally, we need how many how many periods we need into the future. So maybe we'll just call it uh, periods. Okay, and then finally we can put in our function. So, so these are the parameters I'm going to call with my function. I'm going to put in my function. So first I'm going to go. I'm going to want to do. I'm going to do this in the order we did it here. So first I'm going to do this part of it. I'm going to do this first step. So I'm going to say uh, NPV, and then th and then if you remember right with NPV, this B9 was the rate. So I'm going to put an R because that's what I called it, the rate, and then. Uh, value one through then it wants the values one through whatever that's these that's these numbers right here so we call that cfs and then we can close that and we can add remember we added the initial cash flow uh and we call that cf cf zero so these are the parameters we just we just worked out right so um so we've done that part so then we have to do the next step. We got to take the future value. So I'm going to go to the front here. I'm going to go future value, and then we're going to use a rate again, and the number of periods. We call it periods. We skip the payment, and then the present value. We want to find. We want. It wants to know the present value. So that's what we found right here. This net present value. But remember, if you remember, I told you earlier that future future value flips it. So I have to make it. I have to flip the sign. So I'm going to put parentheses around all that and make it negative. So I flip it and then close the parentheses and then close the lambda function. 
So that's my lambda function. Um, now, if we want to, we can check it right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to put in my parameters in the order, order I have it. So this lambda function wants R. So it wants this. And the next thing we need is a cash flow. So it'll be these, comma. And the next thing we need is cash flow zero, which is that, comma. And then finally, the number of periods, which is that. And if I close the parentheses and I hit enter, it should give me, let me format this the same. So it gives me the same answer. Let me go equals formula so you can see that formula. All right. So now we've, we've written the function we've tested it, put in the parameters in, and, and we know it's the same answer that we got here and here. Okay. But now how do we call it up? So, so now this is where you use something called name manager. This is a step. It's not, this is another step, but it, uh, um, it's not really that hard. You just go into formulas and go into name manager, and we're going to do a new function, a new name, and we'll call this net future value, right? And you can put in some comments here, like uh, rate is the rate in percent. We just say rate. Uh, what's next? CFS are the cash flows starting period one. CFO or the cat is cash flow at period zero and periods are the number of periods into the future okay and then finally uh, one thing I forgot to do I want I should have copied this formula over so I'm gonna go okay but then I have and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and close this because I forgot to do something before I started I want to I'm gonna paste this in here everything up to where I tested it this is part of it I'm gonna go control C to copy it I'm gonna go back to and then I'm gonna get out of here get a escape I'm going to go back to the name manager. I have to edit this because I had to have to add what I just copied right here into this area right here. So I add that Lambda function right into here. Okay. As you can see, that's just, I just copied. Oops, control. Let me hit escape. Ah, try it again. Control V and then just okay. And then see now it has net future value and it refers to that Lambda function with the comments. All right. So now we can try it down here. So I'm going to go equals net, we named it net future value, net future value. And see now it comes up and it tells you here, whoop, try it again. We'll go future, I'm going to go future value and I'm going to put it in here. Equals net future value. And then it asks you the, the parameters here. R is going to be this. The cash flows are going to be these. Cash flow zero is going to be that. And the periods is that. And you hit enter and it gives you the same answer. Okay. So a very powerful function. Uh, and let me put the formula. There. So we basically wrote, wrote our own Excel formula. You can see where you could use. So I didn't have to use any visual basic. I just used the language of uh, Excel and uh, I was very easily created my own function. So hopefully that was interesting to you. Uh, one of the reasons I brought this up now is because now people, people out, you know, that aren't office insiders or anything like that, we're all starting to see this lambda function in the in the in the wild. So I imagine with this much. Now one thing would happen, like if I would sell this, send the spreadsheet to someone, if they don't have the lambda function, this wouldn't work, would it? Because it would give you an error because. The lamb, the, the, so it has to be, they have to, you know, so if you create this function and send it out to people, if they don't have the Lambda function, it won't work for them. If they do have the Lambda function, it will work. Okay. So that's it for today. If, if you, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you'd like to subscribe, my picture should come up right here. Click on that picture. It'll subscribe you. Um, uh, as always, uh, like, if you like the video, like it, make a comment and, uh, I'll see you next time.